right, so here's a, a diagram of your superior vena cava. As you can see, it bifurcates into right and left inanimate vessels, or inanimate veins. You can also call them brachiocephalic veins because both of those veins do bifurcate into the jugular and, sub and subclavian veins. Okay, so your first image is going to be of the superior vena cava as it bifurcates into right and left brachiocephalic veins. As with most vascular exams, you're going to want to take grayscale, color Doppler, and pulse wave images. Once you're done with the superior vena cava, you're going to want to repeat this step with the right and left brachiocephalic veins. Now, this trio of vessels can be quite tricky for the beginner. Um, you want to use the suprasternal notch and angle towards the heart. You're going to either use a linear transducer or in bigger patients, a small vector. You also want to use uh, the patient's position, have them turn their heads to the right and to the left, and using paramedian approaches. Next, we venture into the jugular vein territory. They're paired veins on either side of the neck. Here's a transverse view. The common carotid artery is medial. The internal jugular vein is lateral to the carotid. And then you have the thyroid, most medial, next to the trachea. Here you can see slight respiratory variation in the jugular vein with light pressure. You can see how the vein collapses. Here's your typical dual screen view showing the open jugular on the left. And then on the right screen, the jugular is collapsed. Uh, the jugular vein is easily collapsible and you might have to use less pressure. And a sagittal view, you got muscle here. And then you see a nice clean um, jugular. A lot of times you might have some reverberation artifacts in there. You can use your TGCs to clean those just to give a nice uh, clear vessel. And then with color, you see it fill up nice. And then finally, spectral wave analysis. Okay, after we do the subclavian, here you can see both subclavian vessels on either side. And the superior vena cava would be right here. These are the brachiocephalics, and then the jugulars would go this way. Here's a transview of the subclavian vessels. To obtain this image, you have to put the probe in the longitudinal orientation on the chest wall. Here you will also see respiratory variation. Um, you may or may not be able to compress this vessel depending on the muscles. Here you can see uh, respiratory variation in the longitudinal subclavian vessels. All right, so here you got a transverse view of the subclavian vessels, vein and artery, and here you see it collapsed, and then a grayscale image, nice and clear vessel wall, and then with color. You see the respiratory variation of the Doppler waveform. So after the subclavian vein, you have your axillary vein. Here's the axillary vein, bifurcating into brachial, which goes deep, and basilic vein which is a superficial vein, the one they commonly use for pick line insertions. So here's your axillary artery and vein when it's collapsing. Your sagittal, nice clear view with color and then with Doppler and an augmentation, distal augment. Next we do the basilic. So the basilic is superficial. It's usually on the medial part of the arm. The cephalic vein runs right here pretty much on top of the, the bicep. The basilic is um, medial, and it's usually very close to the brachial artery and veins. So at that level, you also want to do um, a dual screen. As you can see here, the vessel's pretty big. It's going to be much bigger than the, than the brachial veins. And then collapse in the second screen. Here's your vessel in longitudinal, very clear. No internal echoes. Again, you can use the TGCs with color Doppler. And then with your spectral waveform with some augmentation. Okay, then we do the cephalic vein. That's a superficial vein. You can see the bicep muscle distally here. And right above the muscle within the subcutaneous fat is the cephalic vessel, cephalic vein. Um, the cephalic vein, easily collapsible. On a lot of people, you have, uh, on all, some old people, especially if they're dehydrated, you might have a problem finding these vessels, especially if uh, they've had many uh, lines, they can just be blown out or they just be, you know, sclerosis and they really don't have vessels. So, but you can search all the way up and down until you find a very superficial and you have to use very light pressure because they're easily collapsable. All right, so your dual screen image with uh, when your vessel collapsed, you can see the wall of the vessel right there. All right, then your sagittal image. Here's your bicep muscle. You can see the striations in the muscle. Nice clear vessel right there. Anechoic, no internal echoes. Gotta use your TGCs, always remember that. 
then with color nice fill and uh, for the color uh, you also want to make sure that your scales are set correctly and your wall filters are set correctly so you don't have any bleeding of the color outside of the vessel okay so next we'll do the brachial veins and on this image here you can see cephalic over here and you see the brachial artery and the two brachial veins run in parallel with it here we have your transverse image with and without compression as you see there's two vessels and a bigger vessel the bigger vessel is the brachial artery and the two smaller ones are the veins and then with some compression you see them collapse and the brachial artery stays open um, you know you can collapse an artery too but you have to use a lot more pressure the, the veins are very easily collapsible, unless there's thrombus in it. Okay, sagittal view. Um, there's two veins. I mean, uh, for the protocol, you can use just one. If there's no disease in any of them, you could just use one as uh, the identifier. Um, sagittal, grayscale, with color. And then, nice spectral waveform with an augmentation. I also wrote the blog post about this, so I'll attach this video. I'll update the blog post and attach this video to it. So uh, thank you and take care.